Now, so today we are basically going to start with um, diffraction. And diffraction is defined as the spreading of waves into region of geometric shadow. That's the definition. When passing through a narrow slit or past an edge. Okay? You can write it. I'm just coming in. 10 seconds. Basically what happens is that suppose you have, uh, okay, uh, please don't draw it unless I tell you to, just hold on a bit, I'll exactly te tell you when to draw. So, um, now you can actually. Now, if suppose there is a wave that's going through this gap. So, I'm making the wave runs first. The wave has a wavelength of lambda. Now, it's approaching this. Now, the gap size that you see here is a so this is this gap slit opening and when the wave this would be the direction of the wave that you're looking at okay. so what happens is that the wave is going to spread a bit very little bit so it's going to show you something like this So basically the wavelength will still be the same but the thing is that it shows very little diffraction because um, because this A, the slit opening is much greater than lambda. That's one. Now, if let's suppose you have like a smaller slit 
or a larger wavelength that depends on the wavelength much bigger than the slit opening so the wave is like going uh, in this direction so now you will see the wave to spread much more than that which means it will be more rounded and it will spread into areas which basically where wave cannot reach into geometric shadow as well right and the wavelength would be the same and that's when either the lambda is approximately equal to a or lambda is greater than a diffraction happens okay there are a couple of changes that come and couple of changes which do not happen at all so I'm going to write those first of all you guys need to remember that the frequency remains same that never changes then thing is that the wavelength remains same so we're not expecting a change in speed or you know whatever and also velocity remains same however amplitude does decrease as it goes further and further and that is because of uh, energy loss and that's the only reason why it happens otherwise everything remains the same okay okay Amana Aisha is that clear? I just want to tell you, write a note here so you guys can remember this. If the slit opening is greater than lambda, so okay, let's uh, write three conditions. If the slit opening is approximately equal to lambda, and if slit opening is less than lambda, then what happens? So in this one we can say that little to no diffraction is seen like 
very little it's like that okay in this case most visible diffraction is same and in this case the greater the lambda is the greater diffraction there would be greater diffraction occurs but not very visible the reason is that because it's passing a very small slit then it will lose a lot of energy as well that's fine So generally, like for example, if there is a rock, giving you an example, rock in middle of a river or stream, okay. So what you see is that the water body, which is like around it, The waves of the water are going this way and when this comes they basically spread like they turn so they go like this like they spread inside right because this side, just behind the rock, there would be geometric shadow that is covered with diffraction. Then, in some cases, mobile signals are also sent using diffraction. Like for example, Suppose there is a hill, on one side of the hill, you got the transmitter, and the other side we have a house, where we need to you know, send the signals, and of course uh, the atmosphere is like this. So then when the signals are sent, because there is a gap now, they go like this and they spread. Because naturally the, the gap behaves like a slit all right do you guys understand this sir the gap is between the hill and the atmosphere yes it's the end of the atmosphere Aisha, is that clear? Aman? Yes, sir. Now. So the next thing, I'll go ahead on further. There's something called coherence. Coherence. And coherence basically refers to coherent sources 
emit waves that are in constant phase difference what i mean by this is they could have any like for example there are two waves or two sources which produce waves like this and the other wave is like that although right now these two waves are exactly anti phase of each other but from each point they are anti phase which means they are 180 degrees at, at each point which means that these two waves are coherent now suppose there is like a source that is producing a wave like this and then another source is producing a wave like this and now if you see this like it was like 180 from every side and suddenly at this particular side it has you know changed it to 0 degrees phase difference like in this the crest was meeting the trough crest trough you see crest and now suddenly trough and now here now the trough is meeting trough crest is meeting crest so from this point it becomes not coherent or incoherent is it clear yes so coherent just means that throughout the time they should have just one single uh, phase difference and it should stay constant throughout okay like that okay you can draw this and write this down and then we're going to go forward okay now so then we going to look at something called young's double slit experiment now this is one of the most important things in as because a lot of time the question will come here the only requirement for uh, Young's double slit experiment is that can only be performed by coherent sources so to do this we use one source with two slits and that's why it is named like young's double slit experiment okay like that all right now let me show you how 
what I mean by this. So usually what happens is that there are there is like one slit right and there's another one. So these two gaps are like in the middle are two slits. Let's call this S1 slit, S2 slit and then we're basically using one source. Suppose this is the laser light we're using. And now light is like this okay. oh my god this is like extreme okay I'm not very good with coloring I guess so suppose this uh, this is the source of light that is passing or going to pass through the slit so now because there are two gaps right now as you can see right so let me write it again S1 and S2 like this so it's gonna spread it's gonna go like this uh oh So it's going to diffract as you know it's going to diffract because each slit will have its own like uh, diffraction happening and if you look closely in this section it is going to meet right sort of interfere from a distance you would see in this section you're going to see interference happening okay interference basically means that they're like two different waves which are now um, because the two sources have like two slits have caused it to become two sourced and then they're meeting at a certain you know point is that clear And usually to an eye it looks like like different you know dots like it would be a big one and then on the side it would be smaller ones like this so it become it feels like from the front it feels like interference like they're different you know light just vanishes somewhere and then it's very dark like this so you get bright dark bright dark you know uh, light points like that Okay. 
now so let's now talk about the interference pattern that's very important to see what basically happens is that i'm going to explain this using a figure actually can't explain that way you can know let's do it that way it doesn't really matter okay so suppose now you have two slits and this is the wavelength oh my god this is the wavelength of the wave this is your slit s1 this is your slit s2 and from slit s1 to slit s2 the gap is a like the distance between them is a okay i'm going to explain everything what this these all have um, a meaning so i'm going to explain that to you So from slit 1 you're going to see a wave pattern like this okay and slit s2 you're going to see wave uh, a diffraction pattern like this so now if you look at it it's basically uh, the two slits waves are interfering with each other like this so this pattern forms okay now what I want you guys to know is that right in the front if you put a screen just to see the pattern this is your screen so the distance from the slit to the screen is called capital D and what you see in the middle like I guess I'm going to use a um, different color from the middle till here you're going to see a maxima maxima means that there's going to be a bright spot just like this one and then on either sides 
you're also going to see a maximum like this and also on that side as well you're going to see a maximum just the same distance so i'm just making it a bit you know um, free hands so it's not very accurate that's fine and in them in the middle this will be you will see a minima and you will see a minima so basically it's just like you know the light is going to be shown like like this it's going to be a bright spot and then the light will be gone from here and then there is a smaller red red spot like bright spot and another bright spot like this so basically just like these are like maximas on the side and in the middle there are minimas do you guys understand what i'm saying so generally what we call this we call this as the the center one is the zeroth order maxima the ones that are made on the either side are first order and if i had made more then it would be the second order and the third order and so on on both sides it just happens like that okay this is the first minima and that's also the first minima next will be the second minima and so on so now from this point you can actually take like from a minima to another minima you can find x and then from either maximum maxima or minima to minima you can also call this as x so that's the same thing minima just means that it's going to be the uh, there's, there's not going to be any wave there okay. So now, the thing is that I'm just going to write down what we basically mean, what are these uh, symbols for, and then we're going to continue tomorrow, I mean the next class. So la this lambda is the wavelength in this diagram. A is called the slit separation, it is between that, here is A if you can't find it. Um, X is called the fringe separation and these minima maxima are called fringes and D is the distance between screen and slits. How they are related to each other? They are related to each other by the formula a x equals to lambda d and that's you go you have to remember that's the young double slits formula okay everything is clear yes sir if you write it this down and then i'm gonna see you guys um in next week okay so you have a nice day then